Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Ikoria is a week away, so for the early streamer event that I'll be participating in on Wednesday the 15th, I'm putting together a bunch of early deck lists, stuff that I want to try out uh, when the format is made live. Um, so with all these decks, as always, similar to uh, Eldraine and uh, Theros, uh, they're all initial brews, stuff that's untested, but ideas that I want to try out. Um, so open to feedback for sure in the comments. If I'm missing anything, if I'm not considering any new cards and trying to go through as much of the spoilers and as much of the cards as possible. Um, but this one here is a Mardu, so black, white, red, uh, Hero of Precinct 1 Human Tribal deck. Um, so Hero of the Precinct 1, uh, the kind of card that the structure of the deck is built around. It's a two-mana creature. Uh, you probably know by now, you usually see it in Esper Hero. Whenever you cast a multicolor spell, you get to create a 1-1 one, one human token. Uh, in the set, um, despite Mutate not impacting any of your human creatures, there's a whole sub-theme of Human Matters cards. Um, so these are cards that come in multicolor, thankfully, uh, that all kind of trigger off Hero of Precinct 1. Um, so one of the good cards that came out is 2 mana, uh, Dire Tactics, Instant Speed Exile Target Creature. Uh, if you don't control a human, you lose life equal to that creature's toughness. Uh, considering pretty much the entirety of our deck, uh, other than a couple of honorary humans, if we want to call them that, uh, this is basically 2 mana Exile Target Creature, which is a really good card to have in this archetype also triggers hero. Um, Fireblade Artist is two mana hasty uh, and when you're creating tokens at the beginning of your upkeep you can sack any of those tokens to deal two damage to creature oh, sorry to tar uh, player or planeswalker. Uh, General's Enforcer is a new human that was printed. Two mana two three. Uh, legendary humans you control have indestructible so we'll highlight some of the legendary uh, in humans that we do have in the deck so kind of implicit protection for our creatures uh, and then for four mana you can exile target card from a graveyard uh, if it was a creature you get to create a white human soldier so it's a good mana sink if we run late in the game we can just pump out creatures that way um, we have Rixmati reveler just a couple uh, it's just to filter our early draws we do have some legendary creatures as three ofs in the deck uh, so it can just kind of pass those along uh, also if we run out of cards in hand it's a good top deck uh, you can spectacle it and draw three cards that way there. Um, four Stormfist Crusaders uh, draws us cards, has menace, and uh, triggers the hero. Uh, General Kudro of the Dranith. So this is a new card from the set. Uh, so it's a three mana legendary creature. So General's Enforcer does protect it. It is a three mana three three. Other humans you control get plus one one. So a nice lord for the team. Uh, whenever it or another human enters the battlefield under your control, Exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. So built-in graveyard protection. Um, Abzan seems to be really wanting to bring things out of the graveyard, so this is a good way to keeping that in check. And then for two mana, you can sacrifice two humans to destroy target creature with power four or greater. Uh, all the hero precinct one tokens, you can sack those. So it's kind of graveyard control, creature removal, and an anthem all stacked into one creature, which is really nice. So we have three of those. We have three Judith the Scourge Diva. Um, so this is another creature that is a pseudo anthem. So our creatures get plus one zero. Uh, and then whenever a non-token creature dies, we can direct one point of damage to any permanent uh, a player, creature, whatever you want. Um, so that's three of in those. Um, and then I'll get to Luris in a sec, but we have Tajik Legion's Blade, the last of our legendary creatures. So haste, mentor, you can pump up your stuff, prevents non-combat uh, damage from killing our creatures. Uh, the first strike usually doesn't come up that much, but it's just another hasty threat, kind of uh, pumps up the power of some of our other creatures, especially once you start having the anthem effects. So Luros is a, one of the companion cards. We are not playing it as companion. We are playing it as a two of in the deck, and we are not building our deck with the restriction. Now, there's a lot of good creatures, as we saw, in the 3-mana slot that would be prevented from this, but we're treating this as a 3-mana creature that triggers the hero, and it's really good with, at each of our turns, we can cast one permanent spell with two or less from our graveyard. Um, so that's basically everything you see here we can cast from our graveyard. So late game, this is a value engine that we can get going to just recycle our threats. Uh, another honorary human is an insect overlord, a luminous broodmother. I think this card's gonna be really good. 
I'm hoping uh, for these white base shells that typically get rocked when you get a board wipe happen. Um, so whenever a creature you control without flying dies, you return it to the battlefield under uh, its owner's control with a flying counter on it. So basically, um, creature dies, comes back, and now it flies and it's evasive. So they can wipe our board, but then we still have a big legion coming. Um, doesn't obviously work with the tokens, uh, but it's still a good kind of insurance policy. Um, so I'm trying three of these and then one Soren. Soren's another way we could reanimate creatures. Um, it does give us lifelink as well. Um, going to play around with these numbers, obviously. This top end is still a little... We want to try it out, play one of here or there, see if it's relevant or not. May just be the four Luminous Broodmothers as a top end. Um, I think that card can be pretty good in that case. Um, at least it offsets some of the life that loss that we might be taking with the deck. Our mana base is kind of painful. Um, and then two Ember Cleaves. We make a lot of tokens. We can go wide. We have Anthems. Let's cleave them. So even Soren could just be another cleave perhaps. But I want to play some games with it, see how it goes and goes from there. Uh, mana base wise, we are a three color deck that's pretty intensive on its color uh, requirements. Um, so we are playing a full set of shock lands and a full set of uh, tri lands. Um, the coming into play tapped is a little annoying, but the nice thing is we don't have any plays on one. Might be wrong to not have plays on one, but it seems like these cards are a lot better. Um, Maybe worthwhile with Rick's Mahdi to cut those for some one drops, but I want to play out the deck a bit, see how it goes. Um, I'm not playing Fabled Passage just because I don't want any other lands to come into play tapped potentially other than these tri lands. And I think the upside of getting all three colors in our deck is worth it coming into play tapped. Um, otherwise, we're just playing some basics. I'm not even playing Castle Ardenvale or Castle uh, Lockwain. Uh, it's tempted you know, to come into play untapped. Um, we might want to try it out once I play some games. It might be worth to have one castle in here. Uh, probably the I would say the black castle just for card advantage. Um, these having land types might be beneficial, but we'll take it from here. We'll see. Uh, this won't be the, one of the decks for sure that I'll be playing at the streamer event. Um, like the strategy of it, and I want to try to test it out, see how it goes. So as I mentioned, I'll be putting out a few of these deck lists. Uh, if there is some kind of ideas, build around, stuff like that, do drop a note on in the comments if you have any deck lists you want to share. Uh, I'm going to try to crowdsource some user decks as well, uh, some viewer decks, and try to feature those on the channel as well. Uh, whether it be the early streamer or even just like once we go live over the course of the weekend, I'll be pumping out a bunch of content. Uh, so hoping to get as many uh, new fresh deck ideas into the queue as possible. Anyways, let me know if you have any ideas, any suggestions, anything like that, and hopefully catch you Wednesday. I'll be streaming from around 12 Eastern, probably till late evening um, and then everything else will be uh, recapped and put onto YouTube afterwards. Thanks for stopping by and have a great one.